Hello and welcome to the first in a while uh, edition of Tears Don't Fall, the show where each episode we subject one another to a band's entire discography and then present our subjective tiered lists to you, the viewer, you, our wonderful Twitch viewers, uh, to vote on whose subjective tier list is objectively correct. Uh, I'm Connor O'Keen. I'm Luke Ashley. And... I'm the reigning champion. The belt is oh, like somewhere. Come off it. It's somewhere. Oh. I don't know where I put it. I, I used it as a prop in the Unbelievable. Interregnum, and I don't know where I put it. But I am the uh, the uh, the reigning champion here on the back of Ramstein. Yes. I brought that home on Ramstein. Mm-hmm. This is true. After you stole it from me uh, in the in the the Opeth mm-hmm. debacle. My greasy grubby hands. The Opeth kerfuffle. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, now we're hitting Trivium. We're mm-hmm. back after My like four months. My turn to bring months. the belt home. That's and it. this is unprecedented. You you picked Trivium um, yes. for the last episode. We were like, we're going to be on tour for the next couple of weeks. We'll be back in two weeks. We'll hit up Trivium, teehee. Uh, and then Melbourne went into a four-month lockdown. Oops. Whoops. But in that time, Trivium went and released another <laughs> album, which is... Really fucking unprecedented because yes. the last one came out last year. Right? What are you nuts? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And um, it surely threw our existing lists into disarray. Uh, uh, yeah, well, that remains to be seen. We will see there. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so before we get into it, uh, let's talk previous history with the bands. I feel, that, I feel like this is probably the first since our Metallica list where we're both kind of... This is like neutral ground. It is. This is a kind of shaking of the hands. Since the very first episode, this is a band we are both very familiar with intimately. I'd say uh, for um, most of our musical journeys, respectively. Yeah, yeah. Um, At least our metal journeys. Yep. For sure. Um, And it's, yeah, very exciting. This is um, one of those bands that we went, oh, maybe we'll do it one day. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm really excited that we actually it's, uh, get to talk about it's it. It's funny. I remember it being like one that I was like, I think we held up as an example of like, maybe we should hold off on these sorts of bands mm. because it'll just end up being us jerking each other off. It'll be less of a shaking of the hands and more of a tugging of the cocks. Um, <laughs> this is true. But here, hey, we're here. It's been four long months, dude. Hey, well, I'm ready to tug. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, continue. Yes, uh, so I'll start with my uh, where I begin yeah. with Trivium. So um, the first I heard of Trivium was when the Crusade was just released. Okay. Um, someone showed it to me, and uh, I think I found the vocals a little harsh at the time, uh, but it was a record I stuck with, and it was an in for harsh vocals for me. Ah, okay, cool. Um then I saw the Roadrunner United DVD, mm. where Trivium was, I, I, I believe, Heafy may have just turned 18. Um, it was a super baby face, or could be even 19, uh, because it would have been would be a bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe 19. Yeah. Um, still, like, quite uh, babyish. Um, and was playing a bunch of material off Ascendancy, and mm. went, oh, I'll go back and check that out. Um, and from there. Yeah, uh, you know, Shogun was released, and it's all history. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, I've had, it's they're a they're a band that we've grown together. Very yeah, much so. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Similarly, uh, I, I feel like around the same um, age, we're a year apart um, in terms of age. Uh, so when I got into them, uh, it was in the lead up to Shogun coming out. Um, I was listening to uh, the Full Metal Racket, which is now the Racket. Um, and the uh, DJ spun uh, Down From The Sky one week, and then the next week spun um, A Prometheus and the Crucifix. And it was uh, similarly, it was like a, an in for harsh vocals for me because the vocals were kind of like in- intimidating for, for what I was kind of into at the time. Um, uh, but the the hooks and the melodies was just so catchy and, and um, anthemic that I... Uh, I really uh, fell for it, mm. and um, uh, yeah, got took, got Shogun. Probably not the weekend it came out, but shortly mm-hmm. after, I picked up a copy and uh, adored it. Um, and then kind of went back, and I did. I did my infrasendency was also the Roadrunner United DVD. Beautiful. Um, cool. Hearing pull harder on the strings of your martyr, yeah. or as uh, Deja and Deluxe <laughs> dubbed it, tug harder on the strings of your yeah. martyr. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that that. Uh, was my in for for that stuff? Um, that DVD was an in for so many bands for me on the under the Road, Roadrunner yeah. label. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, uh, similarly, it's been a band that yeah, I guess uh, have, have grown um, alongside of and 
had you know ups and downs moments of thinking mm. am i a trivium fan anymore um but ultimately yes uh i i've seen them the last few times they've been out um mm-hmm. in fact i i I don't think since in waves there's been an occasion where I haven't caught the nice. caught a, an appearance of theirs, whether it be festival or, or mm-hmm. a headlining thing. Um, and I'm wearing my my trivia t shirt <laughs> yes. tonight, so very cool logo. Beautiful, yes. yes. Um, so with that, shall we get into it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, dude. I'm very I, curious. I'm to trying see to recall. Where... It was either, and I feel like as. Um, uh, Machine Head and Trivium have uh, grown together in our label brothers. Yeah. Um, the first time we uh, met after high school was in a pit, and it would have either been Trivium or Machine it Head. It was Machine Head. It was, was. Machine yeah, Head? It was, yeah, it was an evening with Machine I Head. I remember seeing your bold noggin, yeah, your bold yeah. scone in and the pit. I was like, taking. huh? <laughs> where's, where's the head gone? Didn't this kind of have hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, but yeah, anyway, so, we yeah. digress. Right. Yes, absolutely digress. So let us begin from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Ember to Inferno, 2003. Now, uh, this is a record I was certainly not around for at the time, mm. um, as stated. And a record that's fairly hard to find, um, at least until it had a reprint down the line mm. for its, I think, 10th anniversary, 2013. Um, where to begin? Uh, let's begin with its record label. So it was released on Life Force Records in 2003, mm. and uh, it's pretty easy to forget listening to this record that um, the members of Trivium were 16, 17, I think Paolo was maybe just turning 18, mm. um, during the writing and recording and release of this record. Um, it might be their least refined work, uh, sonically, but I believe it's far from their least focused. Um, the, there are choruses, distinct harmonies, and cadences throughout this record that are all very distinguishable. Uh, and I say props to the writing team, which I believe were Matt and Paolo, for developing such an iconic sound at such a formative time where I guess you'd be trying to find your identity or your sonic identity. Um, and they smashed that out of the ballpark. Unfortunately, it's not really to my taste. Hmm. It is sitting at a C for me. It's not an album I often am keen to revisit in their catalogue. But every now and then, it's really cool to go back and hear where it began. Mm. Um, I'll place the C instead of, say, a a D, because I I think there there are select songs on here, such as uh, Ember to Inferno, uh, Pillar of Serpents, uh, Requiem, um, that are quite memorable. Um, and have moments in there that I can uh, get uh, material out of years on. And I'd say especially um, revisiting this album after the Chapman Studios Live DVD, um, that reinvigorated my interest for this album. And uh, that's caught my attention on those particular tracks. Hmm. There's still a lot on here that I I go, okay, it feels a a distant without a purpose. Hmm. Um, uh, but you know, yeah, there there are greater sins one can commit on a debut record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. um, yeah, I, I share I share that sentiment. Um, for the most part, I think uh, the the heavy for the or dissonant for the sake of dissonant thing, um, and the the constantly shifting um so- song structures yeah. uh, feel like. Um, they're, they're symptoms of the age that they were when they wrote this stuff. You know, it's a mm. um, it's a, a youthful exuberance, but not yet aimed at anything. You know, um, uh, similarly for me, it sits at a C. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a D tier album because there's genuinely cool shit going on here. Yeah. Like I said, uh, pillars. I think um, uh, requiem. I, th- I really like. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I collect, if I could collapse the masses. Yeah. Is that the name yeah. It sounds like a fucking book report title. <laughs> <laughs> if I could collapse the masses by Matt Heafy. Um, but I really like it. Um, I think it could be a lack of familiarity talking because this is definitely the album that I had spent the least time with mm-hmm. um, uh, in, in terms of their discography, probably save for In the Core of the Dragon um, before this uh, this tier list. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the, the hooks don't kind of stick with me the way that 
stuff mm -hmm. after this does. Um, so uh, I think, um, yeah, uh, like all in all, it's it's a really ambitious and, and admirable first de like debut album. Uh, yeah. Like Jesus Christ, um, you know, you should be so lucky to have that under your belt at, at seventeen. The um, the uh, right hand discipline for the guitar work is crazy, mm. crazy for their age, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, um, I believe like uh, their history is that um, uh, Matt's uh, father was uh, and is a musician um, uh, okay. and, and was managing trivium at the time so i bet he had the stick out in the metronome beating him to make sure he had that right hand going because god damn woo, that'll do it yeah do you've it. got to it's really tight for his age yeah it's crazy very cool um and well i mean that's awesome it sets them up for for years to come um and i would say uh travis smith's drumming is uh pretty standout on this as well it's all of his parts uh, kind of they're unique and ambitious mm -hmm. uh, and his double kick barrage is apparent immediately like it's not something that he works up to in, in mm. subsequent albums it's something he comes out of the gates with so as a uh, as a drummer that that really caught my attention yeah. um and yeah it's just it's it's fun it's fun um but it sits at a seat yeah you know um yeah Absolutely. and i think like it's the the production on this album uh, sounds good for its time, sounds great for mm -hmm. a first album, and sounds uh, appropriate for the the sound that they're kind of um, they're going for on this. That that very early what is it was this two thousand three? You say yes, yeah, two thousand three metalcore. Mm. Like shit, you know, it's it's the genre is still uh, being. Like yeah, I mean, like being established. It's not 2003 metalcore at this point. It, it no. is metalcore. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I think there are far more egregious examples of that sound and you know th uh, relics of that time that, well, yeah. that have aged far less gracefully than. There this. are plenty of risks that are taken here. Um, yeah, musically. Yeah, yeah, and I think the um, uh, not all of them work. No, not all of them work, but, but I think I think the it's a risk, and, the, and in metalcore, that's a lot. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the trope of of the like swinging back and forth between like you know heavy and um, uh, heartfelt or you know soft and, and yeah. harsh vocals um, is kind of a bit uh, tacky in in yeah. worse examples of this sound. Here, mm -hmm. I think it, it sounds pretty. Um, it, it's delivered with conviction, you know, uh, and it doesn't feel like a. Um, uh, just a, a really um, catch-all, yeah. like a, a, a cop-out, or a, um, a, a I don't know, a cheap way to garner a wider audience. You know? Yeah. To yeah. me, they um, they're avoiding the easy route in melodies almost mm. to a fault. Uh, yeah, yeah, because, that's a good way of putting it. Um, a lot of the melodies and harmonies in the choruses are uh, they're they're recognisable because they're so. Um, I wouldn't say uh, out of tune, but they're yeah, I was gonna say uh, funky. They're, they're a bit pitchy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Um, all right, well, let's see, let's see what chat thinks uh, in terms of this album. Does anybody have anything to say on this album? Uh, Callum says almost every debut for a metal band when they're young is usually them trying to find their sound and understand mm. each other's interests and skills instrumentally. Yeah, well, I think that's that's definitely the case, and I think they. Uh, uh, this is such a strong one because they kind of it seems like they've all hit on a really solid common ground in terms of their interests and, and what they want to be producing and stuff yeah um they they wear their their loves on their sleeves while also participating in this this sound that was modern and, and cutting edge for the time which yes. is cool absolutely absolutely um shall we move all right on? yes let's move on to the next few um releases there is the blue demo uh which uh, quickly leads its way into Ascendancy 2005. Beautiful. So the Blue Demo was um, a, a very um, rare and not often talked about release, uh, mainly just for the Roadrunners Records reps um, that was sent out. It, it secured two big things for Trivium. One was a deal with Roadrunner Records, which they still have to this day, have released nine albums Nine studio albums under, which wow. is awesome. Yeah. And two, a certain song called Corey. Bailey. Um awesome work on that one too. <laughs> Getting their now lead guitarist in who has uh, held 
uh, essentially a founding member beyond In Between Inferno. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Ascendancy, where do they go from here? They go way up, dude. Ascendancy is a spicy meatball of a record. It's an S for spicy. Wow. This album Fucking rocked my world when I heard it for the first time. Talk about ascending, um, Christ. Yeah, yeah, they some true ascendancy Top right floor. there. Top floor, Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's only down from here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a trivium, uh, interesting uh, in, the, in the way that they work with producers. Um, the producer they work with has a um, a really large impact on their sound and their uh, songwriting process. Mm. Uh, the way they develop a record is almost seems like they're funny putty, and the producer's there to mold them into um, something they find mutually agreeable. Okay, uh, cool. At least, at least in my observations, like yeah, sure, sure. Who, whoever produces a Trivium record gets a lot of say, more so than um, than other artists. Mm. And uh, this album has a lot to answer for. Uh, the instrumentals on this album are so good that they were instrumental in my own poor decision to pursue a music career. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nutty. Um, there, yeah, there, there was there's, there was metalcore for me in the term of Kill Switch and um, Shadows Fall yeah. at the time. Uh, haven't heard that name in a while. Mm. Um, and then there was a sentency. Uh, and there was there was something here. There's a certain angst that that sat along like bullet the poison and yeah, um, yeah sure. And I hear it more now than I used to. Uh, back then it used to be night and day. You know there was a real difference. Yeah. Now I go, uh, it's all just angsty, teeny. You know, but um, <laughs> but it holds a real special place in my heart. And yeah. uh, there are to me, there's not a single um, poor track on here. There is uh, is a word I used recently. Um, which was a desperation, mm. and um, this record is full of desperation. There, there's a real fire under their feet here. Yeah, I mean, it's um, in the fucking artwork. The yeah, guys go, oh, <laughs> fuck, that's desperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good luck trying to keep up with tracks like Suffocating Sight. The tempo on that is insane. Oh my god, um, catchy as hell, fast as hell, so energetic. Uh, I, I, I can't praise this album enough. Mm. Um, Anything that I could say against it is kind of also why I love it. Yeah. Um, in that it's very immature. Um, and it and this one does go for a lot of the obvious answers. Uh, but hey, um, they were, uh, they're answers that I now go to in my own songwriting. <laughs> yeah. 15 years on. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're obvious for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got anything? Uh, Please go ahead, Colin. Okay. Um... I I feel like this one absolutely ascends for me as well, but not quite to the top. It's oh, a a for ascendancy. Um, I feel like this makes good on every promise that Ember to Inferno made. Like every inkling that this was a, a band to to keep an eye on is justified on this record. Um, the fury of the performances and uh, like. The, what, did, what did I fucking write here? My own handwriting. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, sorry. The, the the fury of the performances is really, I think, accentuated by a far better production than was on Ember to Inferno. Yeah. Um, and the riffs, the leads, the 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 hookiness. It's all it's all uh, built upon. Everything that that was good about Ember to Inferno is great here. Mm-hmm. And I think. Uh, the, the youthful exuberance and that kind of immaturity is like reined in just enough and focused just enough that it kind of uh, they're able to strike a really nice balance mm-hmm. between fun and like going for the jugular yeah. um, there's an intensity and uh, an urgency straight out the gate fucking Jesus yeah. Christ the, the start of rain is Massive. Uh, like downright intimidating I remember like putting that on uh, on the back of hearing uh, Pull Harder on the, the Roadrunner mm-hmm. United DVD, I listened to this album, I hit play and, and rain started and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, too much, man. <laughs> like, too much, too fast, man. Um, I couldn't fucking handle it. Yeah. It's it's almost like suffocatingly intense in parts, um, uh, but they always kind of give way to a chorus or a melody that, that lends a, a satisfying reprieve. Um, and not in a way that sounds cheap. Again, mm-hmm. it's it's not like a 
you know, ooh baby, yeah baby chorus to to you know no, get the the schmucks interested. It's I, I don't know. It's all really earned. It's minor thirds the musical. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I think it does have. It still has certain elements that. Um, kind of place it in that era of, of metalcore still suffocating sight is the one i go to for that with the um the kind of spoken word bit i can't remember the thing but that's he's talking the, like this yeah and, da, 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 ba, da, da, and it's got like reverb on it and shit y- you know the sound yeah um uh, and it's not it's not bad um but uh i think again this is this is where ember to inferno was a good example of like a, a band's first attempt at, at contributing to that sound mm-hmm. and that movement this is a absolutely shining example of what could have been done with that sound Mm. um uh i think tracks 9 to 12 don't quite have the same uh sticking power for me it could just be a lack of familiarity with them i think the first eight tracks are so strong that that yeah shit man but track 9 to 12 i'm kind of like cool i need to to catch my breath um so i I don't know Uh, that um and the the kind of the fact that it feels kind of um, uh, less less timeless than yeah, that's say, oh, their other albums. It's on a it's, it's on a pretty harsh timer. Places definitely. it places it an A for me. I feel yeah. I feel very safe calling this an A. Yeah. Um, calling it an S, I, I would I, I couldn't do that. But I, I but could I, not put it at an A. I uh, was tossing this up earlier. I was going. I, I, I did put it at an A and then I looked at it and I said I, I feel sick are you sure it's goodness. not the fucking <laughs> bad sour milk it wasn't milk. the sour milk okay uh, like this is yeah yeah no, no it, um, this is sanded past the milk um, <laughs> it, it rises above yeah well no that's fair I, and I will say the those tracks 9 through to 12 um, each one of those tracks has like some kind of like dopamine drop. Mm. It's not just a breakdown; it's a, it's like monkey brain inducing. Yeah, um, um, I think all of those uh, tracks on the back end are awesome. Um, mm. I love them, and uh, that's where this album gets its heaviest. Declaration is a declaration of uh, violence. It's very, very heavy and yeah. very dissonant. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and the the way they end it is pretty fucking nuts as well mm. it feels dun, 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 yeah yeah dun, 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 yeah that oh it's dirty and just that fade out it, it feels like a, a modern and and i don't know they're still wearing their influences on their sleeves like that that feels kind of um or to me it, it, it brings to mind um uh it's the track the pantera track that um ends with uh or starts with a fire seems like a motherfucker it's ah, s- domination yeah. domination yeah 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 um uh yeah it makes makes me think of that mm. um but uh yeah great great album but not the best in my opinion it's okay we all have room for improvement <laughs> speaking of room for improvement um let's move on to the crusade mm. Mm. room for improvement hmm this album has none it's another s baby we out here. We clean it up. Wow. Um, I could. I could not. Once again, I could not put this record in A. I tried. I looked at it, and it made me sick. The uh, the sheer thought of it. Um, and I'd say similarly to Ascendancy, it's also equally dated. Hmm. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like that. That's a part of the attraction for me. Sure. Is that it is. Um, a peak representation of the style at the time. Hmm. Like this, to me, the Crusade is the onion on the belt for bands trying to sound like Metallica. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's such a uh. Uh, rocket of a record, and it is what got me into uh, Trivium. Um, there is so much on here that uh, it turned me onto American metal. Hmm. Um, Previous to this, I was largely listening to Eurometal, and The Crusade could be the record that got me into The Blackening, that got me into Pantera, that got me into Metallica. Right, um, okay. I was, uh, the, I, I couldn't quite penetrate the American sound uh, until The Crusade. Hmm. And uh, absolutely fell in love with this record and spinning it so many years on, I still feel that excitement um i don't listen to this and feel dulled or i i don't feel that um 
there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of songwriting um, weaknesses that I've that I've now sort of caught up with. Right. Uh, yeah. There's this. It's so fun for me. Um, and I didn't get the Metallica references at the time. Now they're <laughs> fairly clear. Yeah. Well, sure, I remember sure. when this was out, everyone was going, "Oh my god, it's Metallica too." Yeah. Um, those that loved Ascendancy hated this record. Uh, because they were um, watering down their sound, that wasn't. It's not quite as harsh. Mm. Um, there's a lot more mid-tempo work at play here, and and a lot, it's a lot catchier, a lot hookier. Mm. Um, uh, and I know we're meant to leave deluxe editions out of the conversation, but uh, Trivium have so many killer bonus tracks that it's hard not to. Okay. Um, I'm not familiar with any of the deluxe edition stuff for this album mm, in particular. Um, there's one track on here called Broken One. Uh, that taught me two-handed tapping, and uh, I have a real soft spot for that. It's on bass. <laughs> That's so fucking cool. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, sick. But uh, not a single weak track on this album for me. It is a long album, um, and I think it would remain an S even if you pulled out three or four songs. Uh, but I do not believe it is hampered by its length. Cool. Uh, okay, so this album for me... You said putting it at A made you feel sick. <laughs> oh, I'm, don't I'm do about it. To make you feel real fucking oh, sick. Oh no, you wouldn't. I'm about to make you feel fucking. You would Ill. not. Um, yeah, man, this this sits at a C. For oh me. my god. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Look, off the bat, like even even listening to this as, as an adult, every time I hit play on, I, I I'm struck by the sense that something's off with this album. The the riffing and the drumming is still just as propulsive, but. There's uh, what, what did I write here? Oh, the decision to to all but abandon harsh vocals mm-hmm. um, has Matt implementing a kind of like Hetfield esque singing. Yes, definitely. Um, that not every melody is a winner. There's some good stuff on here. That there, there, there's some stuff that really works. At, like for my tastes, at least. Um, and when it when it works, I would say it even excels. Entrance uh, to the conflagration. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like Anthem for all its kind of deadly sinners kookiness. I like it. Yep. Tread the floods is great. Um, but I think the the ever changing song structures often mean that the melodies I like don't end up sticking around for long enough, and they're mm-hmm. replaced with melodies that I fucking really don't like. <laughs> um, and I wonder. I wonder which ones. It, it ends up being like. A bit of a slog as a result. You, you mentioned its length and yes. shit, man. I, it's a long one. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, and I, I remember thinking this as a kid. What, what does a it clock in at? It's a, it's a uh, 57 and a half minute album. Um, and the, the decision to end that with an eight minute instrumental mm. track. I remember <laughs> as a kid thinking, the fucking balls on these guys. Yeah, dude. You motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> dude, I get, to, I get to track nine or ten and I'm, I'm checking my watch. Um, oh. Yeah, man, and and no, 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 some no. of the the lyrics feel kind of clumsy. To the rats, I think is is a pretty good example of that. What's the, the what's the chorus? The uh, I'll mess with your blood. That's a lyric. It's tough. I'll dude. mess with your blood, yeah, dude. What are you yeah. gonna do? That's a plague. Finger paint with it. That's a bubonic plague. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Um, that aside, I, I would say that the the thematically the album as a whole feels kind of clumsy and a little confused as well. There, there's um, the the themes. There's like four songs that are about like pretty infamous murders. Yeah, and then a bunch of songs well, and Sanus about will see it. yeah, and Sanus is will see it, man. I was I almost used that you said that this was a, a gateway album, and I would I would agree it is a good gateway album for like heavier stuff, harsher stuff. But I was going to put the fucking version of the cover that has the parental advisory sticker on there. Yeah. Because at the end of this album, you're going to be answering to your kids, Mommy, Daddy, what's a hate crime? Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> Daddy, why am I tied to the fence? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I think it, it 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 feels like a a an attempt to do the Metallica thing of like on, on like Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets, mm-hmm. um, writing songs that are kind of socially conscious or, or whatever, which feels... Good-hearted, but mm-hmm. perhaps wrong-headed, or <laughs> the the execution is a little uh, swing and a miss. Um, uh, I think. Um, uh, and there's there's something about the the pace of this album where ascendancy felt really propulsive. Um, this, like by comparison, is a, is a slog for me. Mm. By the time uh, the rising comes around, and it's it's got 
yeah, Matt the rising insisting is... that I put my hands up and yeah. sing with him, and I'm just like, no, I, I have to go, man. <laughs> this has been really fun. I'll see you at the next one, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, but but I will say, list, sitting and listening to The Crusade, the, the title track, um, it's it's the... Probably the most interesting shit on the album. It's for sick. Me. Yeah, it's great, and, and it's it's eight minutes that flies by. So that's you just got to get there. For it. Yeah, you got to get there. Yeah, you got to yeah, 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 yeah. fucking. Trim you got to get the... put through the the end boss that is the rising before yeah. you get the credits. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. The princess in the castle that is the crusade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Toad is singing at me for three and a half minutes <laughs> on the rising. Put your hand up and sing with me. No, I'm good, man. <laughs> um. Yeah, this this sits at a C for me. I I, I don't think it's uh, again all of the stuff that doesn't work for me here. I still think is ambitious. It's not like they're riding the the coattails of ascendancy or kind of content to just coast by on mm. um, that that sound that was still yep. so popular at the time. It's it's gutsy, um, and I, I believe at the time they were you know quoted in magazines as saying like we're going to be as big as Metallica. You know we're going to be the next Metallica, and people it was, like, it was every, "How are you?" Everyone Fuck was, you. Yeah, 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 and like yeah. really cracked uh-huh. the, the shits. Yeah, yeah, uh, no one liked that. that. Everyone the, hated that. Yeah, all the other crabs in the bucket went, "No, you fucking don't." Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's admirable, um, which is why it doesn't sit at a D. Uh, yeah. But I'm about as likely to revisit this as I am Ember to Inferno. Which I'm going to play very- this to all the fucking time, um, out of. <laughs> Out of all albums I've ever heard, I reckon as uh, the Crusade is probably my top five for the most lyrics I know on an album. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. Uh. <laughs> nah, they're sick. Becoming the Dragon. Sick lyrics, dude. Yep. Detonation. Yep. Standard. Com- standard. It, it, uh, like thrash. Asian fair. Rhyme everything with Shin. Is that yeah. classic? Yeah. That, that old chestnut? That old chestnut. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like I do like Ignition uh, and Detonation as like an opening two tracks and Entrance to the Con- Conflagration mm-hmm. is a fucking sick track. Um, again, there's stuff on here that I that I like. Yeah. Um, but the stuff on here that I, I don't like makes the overall experience of listening to this album as a whole significantly less enjoyable than a lot of their other stuff. So, yeah. sits at uh, a C. One thing I really love about what Trivium does early on is that each album they are changing their sound. They're changing like sonically developing. Yeah, yeah. Whether again, gutsy. Whether for better or worse, um, they don't sit. They don't sit yeah. still. Yeah. Um, and I really like that because it's like, oh, you don't like this album? <laughs> like, there's there's plenty of other uh, versions of Trivium out there. Mm. Um, even though your take is wrong. <laughs> um, I uh, at a C, but that's okay, Cons. Oh, I I have confidence that I will turn you on that to at least a B, at uh, least probably an A. Uh, just uh, I'm I'm just frustrated though. I'm, I know I'm gonna have to listen to this fucking album <laughs> more than I'd like to. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look at chat. No thoughts on the album, as far as I can see. But Gary does say, "I love it when you boys fight." But I disagree. <laughs> um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's move absolutely let's move along. All right. So, um, and it's worth saying also uh, that Ascendancy and Crusade, uh, two records produced by uh, Jason Sukov. So that. That helps a lot as well. You look at production credits, you go, okay, these two are paired together in that sense. They're working with the same producer. Yeah. Um, Which is partially why this departure is such a big one. Here is uh, Trivium's 2008 album, Shogun. Now, I believe one of the most beautiful things in life is finding something that grows and develops alongside you. Just like I was saying with Trivium as a whole. However, uh, it could be family or it could be a pet. could be uh, a baby screaming at 3 a.m. I'm looking at you, Fuddle. Um, <laughs> it could be a parlor palm. Hey, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you got a parlor palm. It's like a kid. Palm. Like a parasocial kid. Um, but whatever it is, these things help to give us like a sense of purpose. Yeah, get your parlor yeah. palm. Yeah. I water them every few days. Yeah, I love it. It's good. It's great. It's uh, very hot fuzz of you. Very yeah. Nick Angel. It, it is a peace lily. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So I don't have kids. Uh, I don't have a peace lily. But what I do have is a parasocial relationship with this perfectly arranged set of frequencies that is Shogun. Um, and this is so much more than an album to me. Uh, this is more than an S. If I could, I would. Uh, unfortunately, the highest we can go is an S. Yeah. Um, to me, this is a cultural milestone in metal mm. uh, and the pinnacle of storytelling without compromising song structure, which mm. is something I really, really value. Um and and, like, and happy to have uh, songs move with the vocals, but to have both work in such perfect tandem uh, is, I, I think, remarkable. Um, this is my personal favourite album of the thousands and possibly all time. Mm. I cannot overstate how much this album means to me and has grown with me uh, through my life. Um, if it was, this would be my first S+. Uh, wow. It's that, it's that high. Yeah. Um, Shogun that what it, it, it does um, lyrically I was saying that Crusade is an album that I focus on lyrically uh, Shogun even more so um, it, it tells tales that are thousands of years old in mythology and yeah makes them uh, new again relevant urgent mm. um, like this record fueled my interest in world mythology and inspired me to write my first album um and and I, I believe I make it, it's fairly apparent that <laughs> that I you know, I'm wearing my influences on my sleeve quite readily with Shogun. Um, there's yeah I can't sing this album's praises high enough. Uh, this is the perfect album for me. Yeah, fucking a uh, backed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely S tier. I think this might be the most uh, S tier album in my mind, um, uh, especially of, of the. Um, uh, of the lists that we've done, I mm-hmm. don't think any have I gone into it going this is S tier, and without a doubt, like had no no wavering yeah. uh, conviction in, in yeah. saying this is a fucking perfect album. No no track uh, w- w- like doesn't waste a minute of your time. Um, I think every track on here is fucking killer. Uh, the production is is excellent and huge and uh, like clear and and. Um, I don't know, ab- abrasive in the in the best possible ways, like when it needs to be. Mm. Um, the the sense of Absolutely. vitality on uh, ascendancy is is here, and the best aspects I think of the Crusaders are here. Um, that 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 heafy kind of singing bark is back, mm-hmm. uh, like pretty much out the gate on um, Kiriste Go Men, yeah. but it's used to such great effect oh my god and that that track just as an opener and the fucking little little 16 year old me <laughs> putting the pieces together connecting the dots that the do 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 at the start uh, of Kirsten Game Man is the chorus of Shogun the last yeah, track I was yeah. like, ah! <laughs> like and, and that's been something uh, uh, like that stuck with me ever since. Whenever mm-hmm. I hear that in in another album, I go, "They're doing the show." Oh, they're doing the show again. Yeah, you put it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's cute. Yeah, it's fucking fucking wonderful. It feels like the the uh, uh, like the culmination of everything that they had done up to that point. Mm. Um, all of their loves musically and thematically and, and lyrically are on show here, and to just such great effect. Um, I think it's uh, absolutely at this point. This is a career defining album for them. And yeah. would be, I, 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 spoilers, I think would be for years to come. Um, this, this is just perfect. Um, and, and really, uh, we talked about like the, the kind of, um, uh, the, the swinging back and forth between, you know, heavy and, and, um, soft mm-hmm. vocals and, and melodies and stuff. Massive dynamic um, range. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it deftly swings between the mm. two and maturely swings between the two on this album. It doesn't feel, uh, at all like a, a, a um, you know uh, a, a sign of the times or anything this this album feels timeless it's ridiculous how they um, went from uh, Ascendancy two albums ago Crusade an album ago to this yeah uh, there is is such a monumental leap yeah yeah, um, yeah. it's like it's a, to me it's hard to think of um, to compare it uh, to its um uh, to its relatives, you'd say maybe Macedon's Crack the Sky, mm. um, uh, maybe what uh, Gajira's Limpho Savage, um, The Blackening. Yeah, I was going to say The Blackening is one of her. Um, a lot of people. But like as a, a as sort of points of reference as to what like I'd say top albums in that sort of groove to thrash. Mm. 
American sounds. Um, and Shogun is just uh, really pushing above, uh, and they are a far younger band. Yeah. At this point, than any of the others, uh, it's remarkable. Yeah, it's uh, it's nuts. Um, and I think uh, thematically and and this whole thing feels like the most well realized uh, output of theirs. Mm. Um, up to this point, certainly. Um, lyrically, like you say, they're, they're um, channeling, you know, mythology and, and the like, and they managed to slip in the kind of uh, Metallica-esque, um, you know, uh, con- condemnation of uh, of um, people profiting off wars and, and whatnot in Down From The Sky, but it's kind of tasteful and woven into this yeah. greater thing. It feels like... It doesn't feel. It doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It feels part and parcel like the the rest of of this piece, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, god damn, not a track goes by without a fucking massive dopamine hit yeah. from from some breakdown or riff or vo- like chorus or a vocal melody or or a, a lead or something like that. We're we're, we're hearing uh, he who spawned the furies right now, and that fucking that- ding, 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 ding. dude. <gasps> this, oh my the god, the backing solo is just. It's fucking it's just insane, straight sliding. Dude. It's just like eight bars of sliding up and down the neck. Yeah, and, and, and that's the backing for the solo. And uh, it's that's a, like they can get messy with this. Yeah, and it still yeah. has clarity. And we talked about like this being an entry point for harsh kind of music. Um, uh, up to this point, I've been getting into like Slipknot and Corn and stuff. But that's all very groove based and all very like angst laden. Mm-hmm. This is this is uh, like real musical brutality. Um, on on the tracks like this in particular, he's born to theories, um, and was by far the heaviest thing I'd heard up to this point. Mm. Um, but it was such a, uh, and still is such a, um, I don't know, a, a wonderful roller coaster uh, of an album to go on. It just ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah, yeah. S tier, love it. All right, let's um, move on before because I'm sure we can just go on. Oh, about we could this we could suck this album so. off for for ages. Let's let's just double check the chat here. Uh, Callum says Shogun is S. That is all. Um, but 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 mm-hmm. said says I've heard at least one other Trivium album, Silence in the Snow, and honestly, nothing seems to compare to Shogun. There's a lot of fun in those songs. I'm definitely biased right. though because I hate the singer's normal, clean singing voice. Couldn't tell you why. I just can't do it. Fair enough. No, that's said. fair. Um, uh, I, Gary, I feel I kind of feel that way with In Between Inferno. Um, mm. It's the clean vocals are pretty uh, nasally. Yeah, a bit naff. Um, uh, but coming from a seventeen-year-old, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I can't do that now. I don't yeah, feel I'll yeah. be able to sing. And Gary um, says, uh, "When I forget that Luke is a Trivium fan, I remember Trigger's Dead Son." Yeah, look, I um, yeah, I ripped off Trivium for <laughs> my whole career. What of it? Yeah, but they ripped off a bunch of other bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway. Most sincere um, form of flattery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, just a quick a mandatory plug once again for the deluxe edition. Um, oh, and yeah. for Shattering the Skies Above, <laughs> Chef's Kiss. Um, I was fortunate enough to see the live debut of that track at the Gershon Room mm. a few days after it was dropped. Oh, my Lord. Um, I believe that was the first uh, track uh, co-written and recorded by... Is it Nick? The Nick, second Nick Augusto, drummer? yeah, on yes. yeah on drums for that yes. one. Um, in the lead up to the next. So album. it is. Um, so Travis moves on, and they have Nick. Yes. On drums for In Flames, uh, In Waves. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. Oops. Sorry. Did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> and there yeah. it is. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> So, In Waves will place at a healthy middle of the road um, because In Waves is the middle child of Trivium's career in every sense. Mm. Uh, Born too late to be a part of the golden era and born too early to be a return to form. Uh, It's an unfortunate victim of circumstance. It's like doomed to live in Shogun's shadow Mm. as the album that homogenized trivium sound mm. and gave it a, an accessible polished veneer uh, mm. that really uh, gives a new angle of brutality but not the one that um, uh, defines them to this point mm. so it will sit middle of the road at a B for me yeah um, and to be clear uh, this album is a very fun listen and there is not a weak track on here uh, so I give this, a, I say a B with um, some conditions. 
uh, typically I, if I'd put something at a C or below, I wouldn't actively go back to listen to it um, as, a, as a comfort pick. Mm. Uh, here, I'll happily go back to In Waves. Um, there's Colin Richardson, who is a production gun, who w- works with uh, Trivium and is likely um, a, a catalyst to a more modern sound and a more modern writing style, more modern production. Um, and Trivium learns to use the cutting room floor better than ever before on this record. Mm. The tracks go way down in length. Um, it does mean they are a little less experimental with their structuring, but um, not necessarily a bad thing. And uh, this album definitely helps keep them relevant with the times. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they kept going in the direction of Shogun, uh, they may be a far more niche band uh, for it. Here, I feel like they this mainstream appeal that um, start they start propelling themselves in uh, definitely helps with um, them maintaining uh, a festival appeal, mm. which uh, I feel like is a big part of Trivium's identity. Um, so there is a lot to celebrate about this record. It just falls at a turning point in their career that makes me wonder what else could have been. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of... Um, much like the cover, I, I, I this album, the, the album cover doesn't help how I feel about this album. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh well, that's, oh well. Yeah, it's, a bit <laughs> gray, it's a bit gray, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, In Waves uh, is a fucking banger track, mm. and uh, this is full of banger tracks. This album, um, but it's it's certainly not as flashy. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah right there with you i mean we named we've we've dropped the term in wave syndrome Mm. in in the course of the last like 12 episodes of of tears don't fall to describe you know the this here it is the album that comes after the the album that is you know career defining up to that point or you know their opus and and this unfortunately this is the 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 you know uh patient zero yeah um uh i think like I, I share every sentiment that you just said. Um, I don't think there's a weak track on this album, to be honest. And I think the the back half of this album is really fucking good. Caustic Other Type, <laughs> Fine, Forsake Not the Dream, Chaos, Chaos Reigns. Reigns. Oh, Fuck me dude, dead. That 13-beat cycle on Chaos Reigns it's gets me moist. Despicable. It gets it gets me confused. I go, where are we? <laughs> Where's one? <laughs> um, and uh, of all these yesterdays is a, a, a nice closer, but I remember um, at the time being like, Where's the like Shogun as a track? Is it what thirteen minute closer? Yeah, um, yeah. that that flies by that takes you on such a journey. Um, and I wanted that again, and I didn't get that here. Listening to it now, it, it does build in a really um, compelling way, mm-hmm. but it's just not as epic as as Shogun. Mm. Um, this is an album that I slept on for years. Um, that I really enjoyed. Then I went away from. Yeah, and, yeah, similar, uh, similar. And in recent years, I've come back to it and gone. This is better than I remember. Yeah, every time I listen to it, I'm like, this, this, is, this, is, this, this is, is fun. Good. Yeah. What? Like, it's just a shame that it came after Shogun. Um, and I think at the time, something that kind of put me off a little bit was that uh, Shogun seemed to be this um, uh, celebration of, of uh, all things metal that had kind of, up to that point, um, that was, you know, uh, had enough of the kind of, I guess what you would call metalcore uh, trimmings, um, to sound to, to, to sound up to date, but it was such a celebration of of like you know Metallica and Iron Maiden and mm-hmm. uh, fucking even like obituary and shit. Um, and then this seemed to, I mean, th- when they put in waves out, my first thought was this that sounds like that pattern, that kick pattern, especially yeah. on the drums, sounds like a fucking attack attack breakdown. Yeah. Yeah, which really, really uh, rubbed me up the wrong way. And because I was because at that at that point yeah. I was in like my I was probably at my peak, uh, you know, metal elitist stuff yeah, yeah, phase. Certainly, certainly. So I was like, "Fuck, you see, you know. so far, Connor." <laughs> yeah, now oh, I'm two no, white guys no, running no, no, a podcast. No, no, no. I've, I've, I'm, I'm really like open minded and shit. Now. <laughs> but yeah. you excite me when you say so far because hey, maybe I'll have another another swing at being. Yeah, a welcome cunt. to the okayed experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, it, like I'd say, a, a lot of the highlights are on the back half of this album. But um, 
uh, Dusk Dismantle is fucking tough. Yeah, dude. That last, um, the, 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 the bit right before the last chorus, that build up with the kicks and yeah. then into everything cutting out. And oh, dude, yeah. God, the, yeah, so the, the toast sick. is better. Toast is better, dude. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and, uh, I mean, in Waves, as much as the track, as much as I was a little put off by its modern sheen and leanings when it first came out, now I listen to it, I'm like, it's almost an annoyingly perfect, uh, like, single they, song. Yeah, yeah, they, it's, it's hyper catchy. It's still one of their biggest tracks commercially. Yeah. Um, and it's a, a massive live staple, I'd say, for all the... Uh, "Quote unquote," right reasons. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it's a crowd pleaser. It's a it's a floor mover. It's a floor filler. Yeah. Um, even if it is a breakdown on intro, verse, and pre-chorus into, um, just into a chorus and then it's breakdown city. Yeah. Again, you know? Um, but hey, like it's a bold way to start an album. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we are nothing if not bold. I think I'm like annoyed at just how well it works, how well it pays off. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um. But the let's... um also the melodies throughout the intro melody. Um, for cap- is it capsize the sea the intro? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. The- um, that goes into the and then yeah. is the octave guitar part. Mm-hmm. Um, entirely chromatic. Uh, it does a very similar thing to um, is it uh, in the in- outro of In Your Words on Roth? Um, oh, okay. That, that has like it's a chromatic lead line, and uh, his albums came out at a very similar time. Um. So it felt like there was a bit of a trend that was being lent on there that I really enjoyed. So it, it definitely like it, it, it tickled my taint. Yeah, well, um, Wrath was right 2009. Yeah, I think this was, was, this was 2011. 2011. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, um, let's but see yeah, that chromatic goodness. What chat thinks? Sid says, "Oh yeah, this is another album I've heard. Couldn't name a single song off it." <laughs> uh, Callum says, "Caustic are the ties that bind, and Inception of the End are two of Trivium's most underrated tracks." Um, yeah, Inception of the End is uh, really fucking catchy. Really, yeah. really cool. Mm. Um, it's it's. Uh, I, I was going to say too. Um, the loss of of uh, Travis Smith and the like acquiring mm-hmm. of Nico Gusto on this. He's got some fucking big shoes to fill. Yeah, he um, does. And I think he, I think he does. I, I uh, he, he brings a he blasts, more, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He brings a far more of a blast sensibility. Yeah, uh, which. And his parts most are, of his drummers do like most drummers do post Travis. Uh, they they I find or, or a few of them have a bit of a blast like penchant. Um, but because I'm so trained for the first few, mm. uh, well, it's interesting. Albums. I feel like this is this is the album where they start to kind of try on different hats, different identities yeah. to go yeah. like, okay, we did we did Shogun. That's yeah. that sound. That's that curiosity like filled mm. well and truly. It would be disingenuous to continue doing that. Yeah. What are we doing now? Uh, yeah. Okay. In waves. Mm-hmm. And and what's to come? Um. And they're almost they're they're almost trying on drummers each album as yes. well. Yes. Yes. From here um, on out, they are because it's a drummer and album. Yeah. Thing. Like Travis's playing and his uh, his parts uh, gave I, I think gave those first four albums. Um, or played a big role in in that first four, those first four albums sound and the it, it had a, a a unique bent to to the stuff that he would decide to play. Um, and on this, again, I don't think Nick drops the ball. I think he picks off picks up mm-hmm. nicely where um, Travis left off. He has a kind of modern uh, like um, uh, like syncopated kind of attack. Uh, that that suits what's what they're trying to do on this album, yeah. Um, and he blasts like a motherfucker, which Travis, ne- Travis never did. Learning to write using space, using yeah. rests, yeah, which yeah. not so much on the previous material. No, it's very not very so continuous. Ducker, 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 ducker. Yeah, yeah. Here, here it's ducker, ducker, yeah, ducker, yeah. A ducker, lot more ducker, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. So yeah, I think he he picks up where Travis left off quite nicely mm-hmm. um but let's 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 move on ah uh, do, <laughs> do we have to do we have to all right let's move on it's <laughs> time for Vengeance Falls 2013 the year is 2013 uh-huh. or 20xx um I'll be quite frank 
chat. Uh, I'm, if I, I have spoken openly about my feelings towards Disturbed and Draymond before. And guess who's producing this one? <laughs> you know what I said about Trivium really leaning into their producers? Uh, the, I give this album a, um, a D for Draymond Does Dallas because this record <laughs> got fucked on. It's <laughs> disgusting. Oh my goodness. Um, so let's start by addressing the positives. Um, Brave This Storm is a decent single track. Mm. Uh, it's got a killer pre-chorus and it's got strong vocal hooks. Yay, plus points. Yeah. Um, let's, let's look at some other tracks here that are a bit of fun. Uh, no Way to Heal. I actually have come to quite enjoy. Mm-hmm. I did it back in the day. I like it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Villainy Thrives is a fun live one. Yeah. Especially the second half, the yeah, breakdown. Yeah, breakdown. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ruin the Raper. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change their tone from um, And Sadness We'll See. You. Um, <laughs> and Incineration, The Broken World, has a fat riff at the, at the front of it. Mm. It's really nice. Uh, so there are some high intensity moments there and some memorable choruses that. Um, salvage this album from, um, I guess, like placing into the bargain bin instead of under it. Um, <laughs> so the not so positives of this album. Sure. Um, Draymond, why? Oh my god, I've never heard a producer have such an effect on an album and a band's uh, mindset and approach to songwriting. It it really feels like a like a beat by Draymond here. Um, there are some tracks on here, namely the track To Believe, which answers the age-old question, if Disturbed's sophomore album is so good, then how come there's no Believe 2? <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. You just fuck off. Oh, we'll just do To Believe, I get. Oh, my fucking God, this song. Oh, my fucking God. Help. Um, there are some great gateway tracks on this album, such as Strife, yeah. uh, that are awesome for new metalheads. Uh, and they serve, and then they have a. They're a very, very important part of uh, the circle of life um, into getting new people into um, trivium and yeah, new people into heavy music and being able to celebrate this culture that we have. Yeah. Um, but I'll be stoked if I never have to hear that song again. Um, and <laughs> trivium S- starts- sucks shit because it's <laughs> a lot of staple. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm aware. Um, that's okay. Like I always need a toilet break. It's good. <laughs> um, Brave the storm, as good of a song as it is, it's a really weak opener, um, and it is a sign of things to come. Hmm. Uh, track two comes the title track, and trivium have a squeaky clean record for releasing banger title tracks. Um, up to this point, we've had the crusade. You sung us praises. You sung an eight-minute instrumental song yeah. at a fifty-seven-minute album that yeah. you ranked at C. You sung us praises. That's yeah. how good it is. Yeah. Shogun, you sung us praises. Oh. Thirteen-minute song. You it. sung us praises. Conor O'Keen singing the thirteen-minute prog songs praises. In waves, we just sung us praises. Like these are all the title tracks they fucking kill. Um, Crown Jewels in their respective albums, and then there's Vengeance Falls. It's like one of the weakest tracks on this album, man. Mm. Um, it's it's really not memorable. I don't know why that was chosen. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Hey, they can't, they can't all be zingers, right? Um, and unfortunately, the best track on this album isn't even on the fucking album. Uh, uh, it's as I am exploding. Yeah, bonus track is very yeah, fucking, yeah. is very fucking good. Yeah, it's relegated to deluxe edition. Yeah. No, don't judge by deluxe. Fuck, it makes it hard. <laughs> I could have I could have bumped it up if we did, but we don't. Um, overall, this is a very one dimensional listen compared to the rest of the catalog. Mm. Um, most of these other albums have numerous modes. You can listen from like a technical standpoint or a or a passive or an active listen. Um, the, this album I just find so irritating from it's dripping with Draymond um, right yeah that's the like the constant Draymondisms in Heavy's vocal delivery um, the the hook execution uh, it's a real deal breaker for me right don't you put it above D cunt don't do it <coughs> <laughs> look at it sitting right ne- look at it sitting right next to Crusade. Crusade! Look at it sitting right next to your SD. Look at that. 
This uh, guy's gonna get smacked as soon as the cameras go off. <laughs> um, look, on the whole, coming back to this album, I, fa I, I found it pretty fucking enjoyable. I think the the uh, the Draymanisms really don't start, like really don't set in for me. Like at least at least from my ear until to believe, and that that is a, a real thorn in the side of this album i think the the amount of syllables that man tries to cram into a bar is obscene um he, he could do with the taking a breath um uh but i i think i was i was reading a little bit about the production of this album and uh hefe sang draymond's praises in terms of his role as a producer, and sure said did. that uh, Draymond managed to get another four to six notes out of his high his high range, which kind of paves the way for things to come, much better things to come. Um, it's another example of them not resting on their laurels; they're trying something new. It doesn't sound like in waves. It doesn't sound like anything that follows. But I don't think you could get what follows without this album. I feel I feel like this is a stepping stone. Um, and I don't think it's I, devoid of merit, so I, it sits at a C for me. I agree. On like, the I, would, basis I would be more that... likely to listen to Vengeance Falls again than I would listen to Ember to Inferno. I could see a bead of sweat rolling down <laughs> when you thought I was going to say the Crusade. <laughs> it's true. Um, it's true. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think I, I don't think it's uh, it's D tier, at least for for what I classify D tier as, as in like, I'm not touching this with a fucking 10 foot barge pole. I would touch this with a 10 foot barge pole. I would touch David Draymond with a 10 foot barge pole. Oh, I'd fucking smack him with a 30. <laughs> <laughs> you take a run up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, what? Jousting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, yeah, I just don't think it's that bad, man. No, that's cool. That's cool. And I like Strife. I, can, uh, I know uh, the Strife won't make the bleeding stop. Uh, nor will it take away the pain. That, like, I'm more bothered by you putting this one rank up than I you feel like putting this rank has been uh, in vain. Crusade three down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so... Uh, it's such a punishing listen <laughs> I found it far less uh, this is why I put it at C so like, you I mentioned it like, doesn't sound like in waves I feel like it is uh, the first like the, the the changes that are made between albums here are almost entirely negative um, mm. in, in my book mm, uh, okay. this is one point where I go I wish they could have um, branched into another avenue mm. um, w like with more gusto yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, again, in terms of their trajectory, they're, they're trying on hats still at this point. Yes, And, they are. and the Draymond hat doesn't fit them as nicely as, as other hats did and will. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it, it's it's not a hat that I'll put at D tier, personally. <sighs> I'm scared to think what you're going to put at D if this doesn't sit there. Oh, <laughs> hey, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, my God. Uh, let's have a look here. What is going on in chat? <laughs> says Vengeance Falls cover art matches the color scheme of D. Sure does. And says Luke, so you have chosen death. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Disgusting. Um, let's have a look here. Next up, shall uh -huh. we? Yeah, next cab off the rank. All right, next up is the, I'd say, um, as reviled mm. to some as uh, Vengeance Falls is I'd say Silence in the Snow is uh, has, a, has a reputation to it also mm. um, so you mentioned with Vengeance Falls uh, that it was a stepping stone to this record uh, for the high range mm. during the Vengeance uh, in Waves and Vengeance Falls Tours, mm. um, Hefe blew out his voice uh, mm. in sensational fashion. Had to cancel a few shows, a few weeks of shows, and uh, and rightfully so as well because uh, his technique was not conducive to longevity, um, mm. which is you can hear it on ascendancy. Oh, absolutely! How, like, like you can you can hear his voice tearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, which kind of. And, um, and him doing lens. that for so many album cycles, it's amazing that he 
uh, made it this long. It lends to the intensity of those early it albums. Does, for sure, it does. But it absolutely wasn't going to last. No, no. Uh, you can't belt out some of those tracks for yeah. 10 years yeah. at this stage. Um, yeah, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, as the king of streaming. <laughs> He uh, posted his ear, nose, and throat appointment on social media. Have you seen this, God? No. <laughs> uh, we'll scope it out afterwards. Uh, check it out on YouTube. Um, you can see they they has a. I don't know. I guess an endoscope can go down either end, right? It's an endoscope. It's not just for the bum. It can be for the mouth as well. <laughs> you, that has two ends. Um, you can make it. Make it. Yeah. Make a donut. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, you can swallow and digest as you go. Uh, so yeah, uh, puts a throat down to his vocal cords and then sings and screams. You can watch the, um, oh. the like uvula and uh, the, the sphincters, the little uh, vulva-like openings. I don't want to see um, that heafy uvula, uvula, uvulating, <laughs> sphincting, or, or vulvating. Vul- 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, and you can check it out. <laughs> Uh, so, Silence in the Snow, produced by Mike Basket, whose production records extend to the Miles Kennedy fan club, which is Miles Kennedy, Alter Bridge, Tremonti, Slash, mm. that, like, alumni, um, and a bunch of dudes who evidently can't stand up straight. Uh, fallen in reverse, falling up, and bless the fault. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I swear this guy's just seeking out bands that have got a limp. Um, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh so the news of no screaming on the next record cycle had me fairly disinterested. It mm. was pretty big news when it came out, um, when the rumor came out. Does Heafy not scream? Um, <laughs> Does and, Heafy is not scream? And also, Silence in the Snow was uh, rumored to be taking a decidedly more pop metal direction. No screams. It's more mix centric, or uh, built for um, the, the, the mix in uh, a cleaner pop metal mix in mind. Mm. Um, off the back of Vengeance Falls, I was going, oh, well. Uh, you mentioned earlier, is, am I a Trivium fan anymore? This was a big point for me. Right. And, huh, am I? Because I'm not, I'm not getting this. Mm. Um, but something crazy happened between having to accommodate for the clean vocals, uh, writing with the production at the forefront. I believe probably for the, for the first time they've truly done this, or they may have attempted since In Waves... Um, where they're u- utilizing space as an instrument or a tool mm-hmm. um, and they're taking it to the nth degree uh, and using a more rock-centric producer um, has resulted in one of the most mature and cohesive entries in their catalogue. Mm. Silence in the Snow is an S-tier triumph through adversity for me. Um I could not believe how much I love this record mm-hmm. and how different it is from the rest of their catalogue. Um, when I heard the first few singles, I was going, okay, cool. Sounds Vengeance Fallsy, but weaker. Um, in context, a remarkably strong album. Mm. And uh, yeah, it can't be compared to anything else at this point. Um, I'm always pleasantly surprised by this record. Uh, similarly to when I go back to In Waves, but, um, but this, uh, I, I, I feel like there is such a sheen mm. on... Uh, everything in in range of the, they do some of the heaviest material they've ever done here um, with no heavy vocals and very few double kicks through yeah. the whole record yeah um, the vocal production is nutty good yeah and uh, it's not what I could have ever expected from Heavy's prior condition yeah well um, uh, it's funny you, you mentioned uh, the no double kick um, between Vengeance Falls and this album Nick uh, leaves the band, or they, they leave on, on, I don't know if it was good terms, but he's gone. Yeah. Um, and they get uh, Matt Madeiro in on drums for this album. Mm-hmm. Um, used to be their sound guy, used to be their mm. sound tech. Oh, sorry, their drum tech. Um, and uh, God, he hey, comes in. You know how to set up the kit? Yeah, you know get how to play it. it? Yeah. And apparently, uh, there were, um, the, as the story goes, he had like 24 hours to learn a, a trivium set. Um, when uh, Nick left while they were on tour mm-hmm. in, I think, 2014. Um, and, and he was uh, just sitting at the back side of the stage just studying the blade. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, well, pff, I, I think um, it kind of makes sense that Nick leaves 
before like like in the the lead up to this album because you hear his drumming on on in waves and it's so it's it's quite intense it it, it almost matches um uh travis's uh, yeah. intensity uh whereas on vengeance falls they've really they've reined everything in including yeah. his his parts yeah and they they sound <clears throat> less inspired as a result mm-hmm. um matt does a fantastic job on on this record he plays uh when when there are double kicks it's it's uh, it, it serves the the kind of old school uh, power metal uh, elements of like new wave of British heavy metal yeah. and and a little bit of you know modern kind of metalcore uh, syncopated kick kind of stuff. Um, but enough about the drums. The album as a whole is fucking great. I also play. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love this album. Wow. This, this, um, this really surprised me. This yeah, ended up being I one thought of my this albums was my hottest take as well. No, no, no. This, uh, this is fantastic. This, there's yeah. not a there's not a track on here I don't like. Mm. Um, there's not a track on here I don't. I'm not able to sing along with, or not able to recall. Uh, especially vocally, this is such a vocally uh, driven album, mm-hmm. um, and it's to great effect. Uh, I, I think all of the uh, all of the vocal melodies and all of the harmonies are fucking wonderful and I love sitting with this album and just paying attention to all of the the layering and stuff of the vocals That's and picking out the yeah. fact that you can pick out a harmony and sing along with that harmony if you choose to is really mm-hmm. fucking nice That's a really wide album Yeah yeah um uh and and like you say the mm. it, it's it seems to be by design I think I was listening to um uh Hefe on the Jasa show mm-hmm. Um, a while back and they were talking about this album it might have been I'm not sure if it was before Sin in the Sentence came out um, but they were talking about this album he was saying that he wanted it to be um, the sort of album that people would have to turn up to hear it at its loudest they, like they would turn it up as loud as, as you know Shogun and it wouldn't be loud enough yeah. so it would have to really crank it um, so yeah I think it's to a great effect um, the track we're hearing now Breathe in the Flames like you say is, is pretty fucking heavy yeah it is um, but with not with that that um, almost suffocating intensity mm. that uh, their earlier stuff brings, um, and yeah, it's just really fucking good. I really like this album. I I, I think it's uh, between Shogun and this, or, or like since Shogun in terms of their discography, mm-hmm. this is the most well realized. Yes, I agree. Thing they're they've, they're they've the two out. most mature records. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, well realized is a nice way to put it. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I I'm I really like pleasantly album. surprised, Cons. Yeah. Uh, when I when I set this at an S, I had shocked myself. I was uh, I was not expecting above an A at any point before uh, we hit this TDF. Well, what what kind of put it at an S for me is I was looking at it and and it doesn't uh, it didn't excite me the way that Shogun did, but it couldn't possibly have done that. Because Shogun, I heard when I was sixteen, yeah. and you know, it was a, it was my first exposure to a lot of those mm-hmm. sounds. Here, I was quite, you know, well versed, yeah. um, in in the uh, sounds that they're drawing influence from and stuff. Um, so it wasn't going to be this revelation that Shogun was, but as an album, I, I can't fault a track on here it, it, personally. I, I love yeah. every track on here. Um, I spent a lot of time with it, and you know what? Um, there are moments, uh, pull me from the void in particular, mm. uh, that <laughs> and the the um, the double kick under that gave me this, the same kind of uh, like I don't know, like childhood glee that I would get from hearing. Um, uh, like Hallowed Be Thy Name yeah. for the first time or whenever right. I put that song on I'm, I'm 14 again yeah, cool. um, and Pull Me From The Void has a has a similar vibe um, mm. so yeah it's a it's a really uh, joyous listen to me it feels a little bit it, it's not like anything else in their discography and it feels a little bit like a like a power metal training montage for what's to come yeah. after this it's like he blew his voice out on the back of Vengeance Falls and here it's like alright getting it under control yeah, um, yeah, and it's like a it's like a a, a spin off episode or something. You know? It's the, it's the <laughs> uh, beach to episode. To me, this is like the um, ritual of a Black Dahlia, or the mm, okay. um, maybe uh, the reroute to remain of In Flames. Like other going back to other moments where bands have um, just for a single record just ridden to a mix, let in the space to the talking, mm. and uh, sort of pulled back. And let uh, something that's, I guess, more commercial but more mature, um, 
yeah. take take the reins yeah. for a little while, uh, where it can be more commercially viable, but doesn't mean that you're um, losing any of your identity for it. Yeah, yeah. And I think as a that. single, just on as a single record, um, at the right time, is one of the most impressive things that I've uh, seen numerous times mm. throughout TDF. Um, yeah, I want to see more of this from more bands. Yeah. That's really exciting. It feels like they just have a, a sort of a mastery over their a domain on a technical level. Sure. I uh, think... Um, I really like that. It's it's cool, too, that these songs don't stick out as, as like, outliers in a live set either. There's uh, plenty of stuff here that they still play live that mm-hmm. sits really nicely in a set with, you know, stuff from Ascendancy and, yeah. and stuff from what's to come. Yeah. Um, and again, shouts out to their their deluxe editions because see, saw your oh, fire oh, and darkness oh, of my mind. Oh really yeah, fucking, dude! Really Two tracks. extra banger bonus yeah, tracks yeah. again. That's and I understand why they're not there with yep. all of these bonus tracks. It makes sense why they're not in the realm of the album to me. Yeah, um, because they are often a little bit more excitable, um, but as bonus tracks, they exist very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, something that is worth mentioning uh, about in waves just doubling back real quick is the uh, while we're talking about deluxe editions the deluxe edition of in waves <gasps> slots the bonus track six in, in the track list fucking awesome yeah dude yeah. i want to see more of that uh that that is really exciting i don't see that very often no i love that there's only a handful of albums to, that spring to my mind that do that that mm. and uh while she sleeps second album did right that as well, right Brainwash. yep 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 thanks for going back to that because uh that's something that's really stuck with me with um within waves and it's yeah, it's really exciting to see. I want other bands to do that. Please, if you're if you're writing an album, and you listen <laughs> to this. Take note, and if you do have an international release or a Japan only or whatnot, see where it might sit mm. uh, because it uh, it, it like really it. mixes. It, it, it feels like you're listening to a new album again in a, a small way. Well, it gives it, it like almost like a, a director's cut uh, quality to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. It's like it's, it feels scenes. much more like a. A movie in that sense, uh, yeah. where you're going, oh, cool! There's a new story beat here that we missed, but yeah, we couldn't do yeah. for a, uh, a commercial purpose. Yeah, yeah, it's neat. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, moving um, swiftly yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sed says I'm morbidly curious on seeing how vocal cords look. Actually, well, oh, hey, excellent. look it up. Apparently, it's out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll chuck it on after this. Um, next um, up, yeah, baby. Next up is the sin and the sentence. 2017. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right. So, following up Science in the Snow, uh, where do we go from here is a big question. Where do we go now? Yeah, dude. Um, so, straight up, the title track, The Sin of the Sentence, is a fucking masterpiece. Mm. Uh, I cannot overstate this enough. Um, it's like SSS tier, dude. Uh, yeah. It is. Uh, it has become, over the last four years... I didn't know it could. Has eclipsed anything on Shogun for me. Anything from their catalog. Wow. Uh, it is the best track they've ever written. It is my favorite track. Fucking eh? Um, it does something that I think any band would be proud to aspire to um, in that it represents the entirety of Trivium's journey. Um, it represents a piece of every album, everywhere they've been, uh, the highs, the lows, everything else, and just makes it the best it can be. Hmm. Um, I feel like if you have to recommend one Trivium song... This would be the one uh, because it it has a gateway element. It has a deep cut element. Um, Mm. I'm just stunned by the uh, by what they're able to achieve. Yeah, it's pretty Um, nice. It does do everything that Trivium does. It it has the the verse is just a straight like E C D E kind of deal. Like it's real cookie cutter in that sense, but. Um, but then it, it just goes so many places mm. and that cookie cutter is a part of that accessibility that just has such broad appeal mm. um, to a veteran or a newcomer in my opinion mm. um, and as I said before there are a few sort of gateway tracks that I don't like from Trivium um, and, and and this <laughs> and this is one that's my favourite yeah cool. um, however herein lies my personal gripe with this record Oh, okay. Uh, this album does lack direction and cohesion in the middle third of the album. Um, mm. And because, in part, I believe, um, they are now looking back 
for the first time. I feel like they're looking back at their previous works instead of looking forward. Mm. Um, there aren't as many um, new ideas flying around or new... Um, there's not as much uncharted territory, I feel, uh, in this record as in previous. Um, uh, going back to that middle third, once Sever the Hand kicks in, this album really shines. And that's mm. a, uh, what, track eight. eight? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, this album shines from there and it's great. Um, but unfortunately, you've got to slog through The Heart From Your Hate, Betrayer, and Endless Night. Um, all uh, tracks I just. They've been great for Triven's career, but they just belong in the sin bin. Um, so this album is a beef bin. Oh, um, oh, oh, <laughs> fucking Jesus. It's, hey, it's. Uh, you've got your. You've, this album is highs and lows yeah, for sure, me. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. And so I think so it's, it's fair it's, to put it's, it. It's nice. Set it middle, yeah. in the middle. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it has it has some tremendous highs and. Uh, like Heart From Your Hate is one of their most popular songs. Um, I'm sure it's a very beloved song. Mm. Same with Betrayer. Betrayer um, earned them a Grammy nomination. Uh, but wow. Uh, I I can't get my head around it. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and and they sit right in the guts of the album. There's no avoiding them. Mm. Um, it really hampers my experience with this album. Mm-hmm. Uh, the return of Heafy's heavy vocals are a very welcome surprise. Yeah. I didn't know if it would ever happen. Um, and... Not only are they have they returned, I'd say they're more ferocious than ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's learned how to control his aggression and harness it to an even uh, heavier extreme. If not, if not more violent or more raspy, there's a a, um, a weight to it that's never been there before. Yeah. Which is really exciting, uh, and that combined with them down tuning to G sharp at this point. Um, on a so that they're down tuning their seven strings to a pretty heavy degree. Yeah. Um it, it results in the angriest and heaviest trivium that has been thus far. Yeah. Uh but I feel like that it's that's its USP and it doesn't it does that that doesn't appeal to me um on the basis that it's also the most riff salady. Sure. So it's that, it, it just being it, the it's angriest. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just, just the, the, it's just riffs flying all over right, the place, sure. and it doesn't feel as um, cohesive as as uh, Shogun when it, when they try that, or yeah. um, or even I'd say In Between Inferno um, mm. when they're when they're doing that. Uh, I can I can forgive them for uh, them being excitable pups. You yeah, know? yeah. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, um, thankfully. There is a um, a golden goose. The new arrival, Alex Bent, yeah. demands my attention at every listen on this album um, with his consistently phenomenal drum work. Uh, Eric, Alex it carries so many of my favourite moments on this record, mm. uh, and in my mind, he has solidified himself as the greatest drummer Trivium have had to this point, which I love Travis. I love Nick. Um Alex is so fucking good. Oh, I never, yeah. I never yeah, yeah, could yeah. have seen someone being more brutal than Nick in Trivium. Yeah, and here we are. Yeah, uh, this guy, I, he must be an octopus. I swear. <laughs> yeah, There's so many like cheeky bells in blasts. Oh, and little, it's, all the ride play yeah, is nuts, ridiculous. and all the yeah splashes just peppered in. It's so exciting. Yeah, yeah his, those uh, little, all, all his little flourishes are, are just like. Mm. Oh, you know, yeah, tell me more real, about Alex, baby. Kiss shit. Um, well, uh, again, up to this point, they've been trying on hats and drummers, mm-hmm. and here they found the fucking perfect fedora, baby. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Um, uh, this sits in an A for me. Um, it feels like a... It's... it's. You said... Uh, I believe you said uh, triumphant to describe uh, the, the title track. Yes. And I think that is how I would describe this album. It is a okay. triumphant wow. return to form in in uh, in regards to like mm-hmm. his vocals and stuff. I yeah, think here the the harsh vocals um, they're not just harsh and abrasive like the the vocals on Ascendancy were. They're delivered with a conviction that makes the, the, mm-hmm. the, the that makes this uh, far more compelling, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a triumphant opening chapter uh, for this new era of Trivium, um, which uh, Alex is such a, a an integral part of. Um, like, it feels like... Uh, 
on uh, in waves. They got Nick and, and let him do his thing, but on Vengeance Falls, he he wasn't. Um, the drums feel like an afterthought almost. Yeah. Um, on Silence in the Snow, uh, Matt is. It wasn't Matt, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Matt is um, do, do, doing uh, his best to service what they're playing, but I, it doesn't feel as though the drums are. I don't know. It, it hasn't been written with drums in mind or something like that. Like here, it feels as though. I can't tell what came first, the the drums or the riffs. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, they play off each other so uh, in 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 a way that's so playful and exciting. Yeah, and yeah. It, uh, like I don't know, it, it brings that sense of urgency and vitality back, mm-hmm. um, to, like tenfold. Uh, and again, off the back of Silence in the Snow, which I I love as an album, um, this was just so fucking exciting. Yeah. Um, and had a little bit of that, like, oh my god! Like, mm. uh, I remember listening to this for the first time and just being like blown away by the first three tracks. I'd heard "Heart from Your Hate." Uh, it was one of the, the like they put out "Sin in the Sentence" as a first single, and it was like, holy fuck! And then "Heart from Your Hate" comes out, and you go, oh, okay, so mm. there's the, there's the single. Um, and yeah. then they put out "Betrayer," and I was like, this is okay. This kind of sits between those two in terms of how fond mm-hmm. I am of, of them. Um, but th- those opening three tracks, Sin in the Sentence, Beyond Oblivion, and uh, Other Worlds, fucking top notch. The Beyond Oblivion rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and has some of the most exciting drum playing uh, that's appeared on any of their, their shit yeah. up to this point. Um, uh, I really like the wretchedness inside. It's bouncy Big and plus. fun. It's, it's just it's just hard to access. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in the it's, it's in the middle. I uh, dude, I quite like Endless Night. I don't I don't hate Endless Night. Um uh Set of the Hand, Beauty and the Sorrow, Revanchist and uh Thrown into the Fire are wonderful. Revanchist is amazing. Uh, uh, to me that is Shogun 2. I'd yeah, say right. it's like Wretchedness Inside and Sever the Hand are both great songs. Yeah. But um there is a, a sense of scale to the revanchist, that, yeah, sure. Um, it, it's when when I hear it, I get taken back to Shogun. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm there's a sense of adventure there that takes me places. That's cool. Hmm. Um, um, it was going to be the title track. Yeah, uh, and I and with, ah, right. and with yeah, fair purpose. Yeah, yeah, roughly so. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, this is. Like Alex it has been the missing ingredient up to this point, and this is a really exciting, uh, yeah, start to a new new chapter of, of Trivium. Um, and I think I'm about as likely. To, I put it at, at an A because I'm about as likely to revisit this album as I am to revisit Ascendancy. Um, yeah. Yep. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Well, I better start filling out my haze then, shouldn't I? <laughs> it's looking a bit stark as there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running out of space on S. I um I don't think I've ever given a band four S recommendations no, before. No, no, you I'm have a not. Dirty S I M P. More often than I not, am. you've given <laughs> four bands, days. Yeah, or bands like no S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was that. It, it was hard to grab. I couldn't. I, I just couldn't put. Um, Crusader A. I'm not a no, monster. You did message me. I'm saying, not a monster. Hey, can we can we do S plus? <laughs> I I'm did. Not changing the fucking layout. No. <laughs> I did. I was like, can't you just like <laughs> good, like halfway off the screen? <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's uh next up. Let's move on to what the dead men say. All right. And uh, dead men tell no tales. So I guess we're stuck with the sin of the sentence too. Then. Uh. There are certainly worse things to be, as this album does open incredibly strong. Mm. Um, but Sin of the Sentence 2 means Electric. that it feels like more of a direct sequel than any album uh, before or after. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I yeah. feel like the Trivium has always at least endeavoured to make some big changes, um, whether they landed or not. Mm. Here... Uh, I don't. I don't have much. There was a three-year gap between albums, and um, uh, uh, they would have been touring wild and focusing on being the kings of streaming. Mm. Um, but I'm not seeing much growth here, and there's something I really look for in a trivium album. Yeah, especially when the one before it feels like it's not uh, really evolving so much either. Um, there are certainly worse things to be, as I said, uh, but that fails to keep pace beyond the Shadows and the Stones for me. Mm-hmm. Like, those first three tracks are killer, killer. 
Um, but very similar story to Sin of the Sentence, uh, where I feel like the middle starts to taper off. Not quite as hard, um, but they're just... A lot of these songs are sort of middle of the road for me. Mm. And also, I'm not—I'm just not as familiar with this album um, as some others. Mm. Uh, it is a more recent album. It only came out last year. Um, but there are some like select landmark tracks, such as Scattering the Ashes, mm. which do make this worth a full listen to land on. Yeah. Uh, I, I adore Scattering the Ashes. Yeah. Um, that is really nice. I'm happy. I'm happy to uh, make the track. Take the walk to the survey for that one. <laughs> Gladly. Um, when, the once sa- again, when the sausage roll is it. scattering the ashes. Fucking oh, A. Beautiful. Uh, once again, Alex steals the show. Kids are dynamo. No doubt about it. Mm. Uh, he puts his gore grind chops uh, to work. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's the best part of the record. Uh, after after the opening salvo. Mm. The bell. That ride bell, yeah, baby. Yeah, oh. very yummy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel quite similarly about this. This album, uh, Sin in the Sentence, for me was uh, really exciting um, and quite a, a shock. Um, I, I didn't expect it. Uh, so I th- this suffers a little bit from In Wave Syndrome for mm-hmm. me, which puts it right next to In Waves in my ranking. Yeah. Um, the current lineup at this point is still like firing on all cylinders in, in terms of their performances. Um, the like Alex is not letting up. Um, there's some really cool breakdowns, some real like dopamine releasing monkey brain knuckle drag and shit in here that that I really enjoy it when mm-hmm. I'm listening to it. But I I find it so hard to recall anything about this album when I'm not listening to it. Um, it, it, it's fair, and I and I've spent a lot of time with this album. I I spun it a lot enough to say that Scattering Ashes is really cool. Um, the opening salvo tracks is really good, and I really like the ones we leave behind as a closer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's, I think there's that's, nice. that's a really nice, uh, yeah. nice closer. In fact, the only track that I don't really like is "Bending the Arc to Fear." Um, it, it, there's there's something about it that I I'm uh, I'm inching towards the skip <laughs> whenever that comes yeah. on um, because it comes after "Scattering the Ashes" and it's four yeah, like, ones well, that like we, we leave behind. Yeah. Um, and it, it doesn't have, like, um, it sits where the revanchist sat on Sin in the Sentence, mm-hmm. but isn't the revanchist. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I still sit this at a, at a B. Yeah. And it's... A B for Blue there, oh, low too early. They dropped their three of the best songs on the album it sounds at pre-release. Like, yeah, yeah. It sounds like they're having a great time just riffing out and, yeah. and doing this, playing, playing in that sound that they've they've now got with with Alex yeah. um in the in the fold um but it just yeah uh, it's fine yeah, it's fine it's, i'm it's like I'm, fine. I'm happy happy to have it yeah yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah 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 that's yeah, it's, it's, it's um well i i think it, it's, it's, it's it's not like it's fun but it's a little i don't know unfocused it doesn't feel like in service of something uh, really sure and and well realized, like Shogun or Silence in the Snow, and it's it, it's not operating on that same kind of adrenaline of like we're back, motherfuckers, like sitting yeah. in the sentence was for for me. Um, so yeah, it just sits at a, mm. sits at a beat. There is a lot of mid tempo um, on this album. Amongst the shows in the Stones, gets the blood pumping. Yeah. Um, and it, it looks, that, 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 looks kind of like the the in waves artwork too. Yeah. The artwork's a little unins, but like un un. Uh, I don't want to say uninspired, but uninspiring no. to me. Yeah, that's know. my my B tier. Uh, it's basically the same image thrice. <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, how about, how about that? that? <laughs> um, yeah. Let's 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 move on because I don't have anything Sorry. else to say about this album. Nah, there's not that much else to nah. say. Um, apart from they were clearly saving uh, something on what the dead men say because it took them three years to release that after Sin of the Sentence and only one year to and uh, almost shadow drop um, in the Court of the Dragon. Mm. Uh, the release cycle on this was very fast. Um, they essentially uh, dropped the title track out of nowhere uh, yeah. like, hey new trivium yeah um, like, and, 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 and we'll and, join oh is this 
What, a, a single already? Yeah. What are they doing, an EP, a, a one-off? Is this a, like a promo with someone? Yeah. Uh, it turns out some of it is a promo with someone, um, namely Elder Scrolls Online, which I think is one of the sickest crossovers. I, like, the, it activates the kid in me. Oh, um, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just one of those, like, bucket list things you'd have as a kid uh, jamming in your room going, oh, man, if I could collab with Bethesda on something, <laughs> that'd be wild. Like, like imagine me get, getting to collab with Elder Scrolls and getting to release uh, Maroon's Dagon Todd Axe. Todd Ray's, dude. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's silly. You wouldn't. And they you did. wouldn't, and they did. And they did. It's, it's really, like, I, I think it's really cute. Um... When, so uh, since this is such a recent thing, as I said, this album was released in between our most, uh, our last TDF. Yeah. So yeah, the single came out like a, a week or two after we announced we we're going to do Trivium. We did not even we know like, this album was going to happen. Yeah. And we, we were like, it. oh, lol, this is going to be the quickest tears list to like be dated yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, but hey, fortunately enough, four uh-huh. months later. Wild, wild. Um, so let's talk in Call of the Dragon now. Proper. Mm. Uh, this album is greater than the sum of its parts for me. Um, individually, these songs are fairly erratic and fun, mm. uh, but as a package, it's desperate and suffocating. Mm. And I say that in the nicest way. It's a it's a choke me daddy of an album. Mm. Um, I haven't heard Trivium with fire under their feet in years like this. I was saying that for ascendancy, and oh boy, is there some ascendancy in here? Mm. Um, this album makes me feel young again. Some of the material on this is an absolute time machine, and I could not have ever foreseen that Trivium would release an album with such urgency and desperation again. Uh, this is the first album since. Uh, Shogun that I am putting at uh, above a B. Yeah, um, wow. Yeah, true. The first in 13 years. And I could not be happier for it. Uh, mm. This album has been in my ears almost, I'd say, probably every second day for the last few weeks. Wow. Uh, maybe for the last uh, a month when it, since the release. Um, I'm astounded at the competence, uh, yeah, the, the competency showed on this record and the um and the purpose yeah there's a purpose here yeah 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 uh it's so driven um it's not without its pitfalls it is an a not an s for a few reasons firstly even though i'm listening to it so much i still feel a bit hesitant to give it such praise um it's not a perfect record but it's pretty damn good um i'd say one of its biggest pitfalls uh, happens when it staggers out of the gate um with x feels like too many layers of wrapping paper for the gift that is in the court of the dragon um it, like exacerbates an otherwise minor misstep by it being right front and center um and as soon as i put this album on i'm left with two minutes of ambience before um in the court of the dragon hits me like a sledgehammer yeah right when i first heard they call the dragon, and, and it comes in straight away with the chorus. Um, and I saw there was track two when the track listing was revealed. I went, "Oh, they're going to do an, like what the Dead Men say was, you know, called nine. This is ten. It's it's clear that they're going to do something epic, a ramp up, something really musical or orchestral, or yeah, like yeah, play sure, on the sure. themes of the track." Yeah. And then I'm going, "Wow, this is like this song hasn't been fully developed yet. Um, I'm going to hear something even greater than this." Um, and it, it just misses the mark for yeah, me. It, yeah. it's, no, that's, it's that's a fair Largely ambient. I don't feel like it realises the atmosphere that I infer from the record. Mm. Um, I, I've talked to other people and they love it. And they And for them it does. Uh, so this is just a subjective thing, but hey, this is what we do here. Um, honestly, it makes me wonder why it was even included and they just didn't open it with... And the God yeah, of yeah, the sure. God. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just like not only a redundant track, but a missed opportunity for me. Um, but that's near on the only negative thing I have to say about a bunch of this. Um, Cons, I'd love for you to give your thoughts on the album and then we can do like a track by track play of yeah, yeah, some sure, of this. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, because it's my... most recent, let's let's give it some love. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, hey, if you didn't get into it. Well, see, on the back of uh, What the Dead Men Say, this was my Am I a Trivium Fan Anymore? Um, moment more so than Vengeance Falls um, because I loved Sin in the Sentence and then What the Dead Men Say left me a bit cold um, and I think it's partially the In Waves syndrome it's partially the things we discussed and I think it's partially um, the time that it came out it came out 
in the in the guts of uh, our longest lockdown mm-hmm. um, during COVID, and yeah. it, like a lot of other albums that came out in the last twenty months, was tasked with distracting. <laughs> I'll, I'll speak personally, distracting me from those circumstances. Mm-hmm. That's a hefty. That's a hefty order, man. There's a lot of apathy to penetrate. Yeah, at that time. yeah, exactly. So. And so I was thinking, do I just? Am I just? Have I outgrown? This is is it just not hitting like it used to? Mm-hmm. Am I done here? Um, I wasn't expecting to uh, enjoy this as much as I did. Um, when they put the the track in the court of the dragon out, I was really excited. I was like, "Wow, this is fucking awesome!" Um, and then they put uh, feast of feast of fire. Mm-hmm. They put feast of fire out, and I went, ah, it <laughs> "Sounds sound to me." It sounded like a vengeance falls B side. I shared the exact sentiment. Um, which. I couldn't have been more wrong. Hearing mm. it in the context of the album, I was like, this is perfect. This is a, a really nice reprieve from just how fucking intense this album is. Yeah, I was. Um, I After I heard Feast of Fire as the second track, I went, oh, no. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I was... Uh, I, I, I felt a little crestfallen. I, I felt like it was... A um, little, like, wind out of the sails. Yeah, I, the I thought it was excitement. a repeat of uh, putting the sin in the sentence out and then Heart From Your Hate. It, it felt very much... Um, but it sits pretty much where Heart From Your Hate sits on Sin of the Sentence, but it serves a far greater purpose. It's it's a far better song, I think. Um, you need a mid-tempo track yeah, at that after, point of the album, yeah, it considering makes, how fast the it makes perfect it is. sense. Yeah. Um, so my initial impressions for this, an album that I didn't expect to enjoy as much, I, th- I thought it was going to be a kind of nail in the coffin for me, Yeah. Um, and didn't expect it to penetrate the fog of of apathy mm. um that i'd been kind of engulfed in uh my first impressions were exceedingly good um i was next not expecting this to surprise me or excite me even as half as much as it did um and it sits at an a for me mm-hmm. uh, and the only thing keeping it from an s for me at this point is familiarity yeah i spent some more time with this album i would not be surprised if it ended up at an s for me yeah um the sense of there's a sense of vitality and urgency on this album uh, that makes for such a compelling listen. Like, I, I, I finish it and I'm like, once more with feeling, baby, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm happy to cycle this Yeah, home. yeah, it's unrelenting, uncompromising, and undoubtedly, I, I would say, some of their finest work since Shogun. Um, yeah. And, and in a far more, um, I don't know, f- uh, future-facing, I, I, I don't know how to, how to uh, kind of put it other than that um way than silence in the snow silence in the snow feels like a a a side side quest you know this feels like main storyline shit yeah um and it all feels in service of something the artwork the lyrics and and the the kind of return to um mythology as Mm -hmm. well as or like borrowing from mythology but using those ideas to make something their own yeah, um, is really yeah, it's exciting. Like Shogun light in that yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and you mentioned the artwork. Even the artwork is a giant X for, for their 10th album. Oh, it is too. Yeah. I didn't notice that. That's yeah, cute. Dude. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I really fucking adore this 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 album. Mm-hmm. And I and I want to spend more time with it because I think it could end up being an S for me. Yeah. Um, there are tracks like A Crisis of Revelation mm. that I just... Um, I was saying A Time Machine... Uh, that this album can be that track in particular is a time machine it's it's nuts that this album can be such a like a throwback in some ways it's like it's it's reaching back and and grabbing the aspects of ascendancy that have uh withstood the the test of time the most you know um yeah it's it's really cool in that way um there are some i'd say there are some death metal leanings and it's it's likely alex's influence Mm-hmm. Uh, since Sin of the Sentence that slowly creep in, creep in. Um, and uh, and some more, like I'd say, prog- like death prog elements uh, a la uh, Shoulder of Death. Mm. Um, and they are quite prevalent on Catastrophist on um, a few tracks in this album. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the Phalanx has, has some real Shoulder in the past. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'd say that's like that's a bit of a, a breath of fresh air, as well as them looking back and grabbing some exciting parts from the past. Mm-hmm. Um, this is them looking back done right for me. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, still, it's like as as they're doing more of these albums that are grabbing more parts from their past, it 
feels like um, they're becoming um, a, a legacy. They're slowly becoming into like a sort of legacy position, um, which at that, this point in their career uh, does make sense. Mm. Like they're uh, to um, be more reflective on uh, their careers. Um because you know Matt's not seventeen anymore; he's thirty-five. Yeah. Um, uh, Apollo is what, thirty-seven now. You know they um, still got many years in them, but um, yeah, I mean, they're they're there to They're like, not the. They don't have the scene haircuts. No, they certainly from, don't from ascendancy. Anymore, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, recedingly. <laughs> um, it's, it's a bit of a scene situation. That's funny. So um. And I, I feel like they manage to, uh, similar to, to Shogun, it, it, it has a kind of a sound that I, I hope will prove something uh, somewhat timeless mm-hmm. um, uh, in that they've got, they're, they're borrowing from these these old, this old kind of well-trod territory, mm-hmm. um, but they've still got a, a track like um, No Way Back Just Through that has that kind of modern... Oh, my God. Uh, that was a surprise. Like modern metalcore bounce to it. That was a surprise. That's um, such a single track. I'm, I'm yeah, really yeah. astounded that that wasn't a pre-release. Well, see, that track reminds me a little bit of um, uh, Wretchedness Inside. Uh, it gives me a similar feel to, mm. to that when I first heard it. Yeah. From Dawn to Decadence, I adore. That is such a fun track. Um, Phalanx, uh, I feel similar to Feast of Fire. Like, it... it I was I was sort of questioning it as a single. Yeah, yeah, um, me too. And it made and went yeah, having those two as singles pre release, I was going, what is this album? Yeah. Um, how uh, can this be cohesive? How do you this? feel about uh, like kind of uh, quick aside or hmm. more general generally speaking? Yeah. Bands releasing the final track of their album as a single, like the Phalanx they put out as a single. Yeah. Slipknot did it with um, what's the fucking track? Uh, I can't remember the name, but the one that that closes out their last album. Yes. Um, I always feel that's that's akin to spoilers, you know. I don't want to know how it ends. Ah, okay. You know, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think it's uh, it's interesting that you would play something that you see as a single um, and put it in the final spot. Typically, uh, you'd be, you'd be wanting a single to be um, leading the front half of an album. Mm, or, yeah. Or somewhere where people are more likely to access it on a yeah. casual listen. Yeah. But I guess with the advent of streaming services, um, album order really doesn't mean as much as it used to uh, for most listeners. Oh uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, that's something I appreciate. Yeah, I think it's. Something I believe that-, that we would be the exception more than the rule. <sighs> yeah, you might be right. I'd, ne- I'd never thought of that. I think it. I still think it matters. I think it's hugely important. Yeah. Um. But I think maybe it it matters less to the bands in terms of what they put out as a single. I think Trivium seem to be really doing them in in all regards, all respects mm. um, around this album. They they've got their hanger that they you know stream and fucking play and stream you know, mm-hmm. sets out of. They, they probably just went fuck it. We'll put the yeah. last track out. Yeah, yeah, we'll put a seven seven and a, and a bit minute track out that ends yeah. the album as a that, single. That clearly why is not? not a single flow. Song. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it breaks off about halfway through the track and um, has a little reprise at the, at the very tail for yeah. a closing chorus. Yeah. But um, it's quite a journey otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I heard that was a single, I was, I was gone. Huh. And, yeah. and a uh, fully animated clip alongside it. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, our Alex is, like, if he was, you know, a fucking... Cut and sick on the sin in the sentence. He was an octopus on what the dead men say. It's fucking Super Saiyan three. Alex Burnt on this one, man. <laughs> like ridiculous shit. Uh, the start of or the the chorus for Fall into Your Hands is this bizarre like bell ride snare mm. and tom combination that it's just it it I can't fathom it. <laughs> um, and it's it's fucking awesome. Uh, he's playing on. Um, uh, Crisis of Revelation and uh, From Dawn to Decadence. Dawn to Decadence is pretty huge. Holy shit. I, yeah. Actually, I'm still not so familiar with the track names that I can remember. Which, which is the one that starts with just this fucking obscene drum roll? Dawn to Decadence. Dawn to Decadence. There it is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fucked. Yeah. And there's, and there's moments where, like, 
they'll come out of a breakdown and like the bridge into you know the solo section or back into a chorus or back into like a vocal section is just Alex cutting sick yeah you know yeah yeah it's it's like just scribble on the wall for yeah, yeah 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 and he just does it yeah um just a yeah. little bit of like percussion porn yeah absolutely you. yeah um, and it does give me that that similar. Uh, you said that this album makes you feel young again. It, uh, I get a similar yeah. thing out of that, where it, it taps into that just like oh, stank face yeah, shit. Yeah, oh, it could be um, Adler on Adderall. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, and just a fun little uh, aside, that my first experience listening to this album was a very enjoyable one. We yes. we sat up, waited till midnight, ticked over. Sat with headphones yeah, on over Discord. Yeah, on the cans and yeah, yeah. watched each other. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That just, part, that part. Yeah. 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 Um, which was great. Yeah, yeah and that it was, was, nice that was to... the most fun first listen of an album I've had in a long time. Yeah. And, and I think we were both a bit scared of what might have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I think, like, um, for for it to be, you know, a band that we have kind of both had had such had a similar kind of starting point with had such a formed such a relationship with mm. and grown with and like shared you know experiences with and stuff yeah. it's a very nice way to experience this album um this is a far more uh, erratic listing than i expected uh how many choices do we have paired you've here? got a I'm big saying, backwards f yeah dude i've got a big fat f <laughs> for your choices my dude <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, Jordy says that cover art is S. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is the yeah, sickest, it is. sickest cover art. I'm so glad they went back to this, like, fantasy mm. kind of thing instead of the, like, minimalistic uh-huh. or the, the PS2 cutscene. <laughs> <shit. laughs> <laughs> the, the um, yeah, real cool. Uh, well, those are our listings. Those are our rankings, chat. Let's get a poll going and yeah, see baby. who who believes who is the winner here. Let's go, Connor. Pay your respects, baby. Luke. Connor. Luke. Uh, 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 and we will go that for two minutes. Thank you yeah. very much. Baby. Feel free to funny vote if you don't know anything. Just vote on the aesthetically you know, pleasing. Which, which shape do you like more? Yeah, which shape do you like more if you haven't heard any of the songs? <laughs> uh, you know, who made their, who made their case? Uh, I, I would I would vote for him to be honest. Aesthetic, I would too. Pleasing, made his case real nice. Crusade in C, you serious? Crusade in C, Vengeance Falls in C, right next to Crusade. Um, But yeah, this was this was fun, and I'm I'm glad that we. I knew we were going to have similarities in like you know Shogun being S tier. Um, Silence is a big surprise. Yeah, I'm I'm what I'm not. I'm surprised that you found it to be such a surprise. We've talked about Silence previously yeah i didn't think i didn't think it was s for me though yeah right that's fair yeah i didn't think it would be s for you either like i didn't think it was that well yeah. like if if i was to rate it above just above a like, sentence excitement it's nuts. Yeah. then i i shogun sit stands head and shoulders above all else yeah <laughs> but, um, <laughs> just in time baby. <laughs> uh but yeah no in terms of like it's just a really fucking good album yeah do you um, see dreamland do you see this shit on the other side? <laughs> Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> oh, Don't rub my fucking nose in it. Um, did you find... I mean, you were probably far more well-versed with a lot of this than than I was. Like, uh, Ember to Inferno and The Crusade are uh, uh, two albums that I've given far less attention yeah. than the others. Yeah. Um, I think coming back to this, my biggest like takeaway is just how overlooked in waves is for myself mm-hmm. at least um and how perplexingly middle of the road i find what the dead men say um yeah i feel let's say the biggest surprise for me yet yeah, would be uh how much i enjoyed in waves silence in the snow mm-hmm. i i like silence in the snow but i never thought it could be an s um and my utter impossibility of placement for Ascendancy and Crusade I've gone they can't be as high as Shogun but they can't be at an A so what do I do yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah fair enough um, but uh, but when I looked at it I go yeah this, 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 this is right sense. It's, well, it's, it made sense to chat too yeah. because you my <laughs> friend take home the belt when I find it yeah, I'll, give it, I'll give it to Mwah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'll take a bow. Yeah, I'll take yeah. my uh, one one in five 
times that I'm going to win TDF <laughs> <laughs> as, as looking by um, the existing results. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's go. Dreamland Up in that average. Crusade S, let's go. Can't believe in waves, not in A's. Well, oh. you know, if you'd, if you'd been here earlier, you could have made your case. Oh, well. Oh, well. You'll have to see it on YouTube now. <laughs> Post hateful comments in our YouTube channel, please. Um, I was lifting. Ah, oh, okay. Fair enough. Absolutely. Fair enough. Um, to Crusade, I hope. Uh, dude, I, I spent some time lifting to uh, in Court of Dragon today. Big yeah. rifts for big lifts. Well, next time you're uh, at the gym, when, when you're uh, to the mats, yeah. you can give it a spin. Yeah. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Yeah, 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 yeah. I reckon that's a maybe, good idea. Maybe, yeah. Um, next time, I'm going to attempt to win the belt back with more big riff for more big lift. And a band, I think, is, a, is an appropriate follow-up to this one. Similar, oh. similar uh, label mates, both featured on that DVD we mentioned earlier. Now, I know what you're thinking. You want to let re Freedom Ring with a shotgun blast. However, I've been having a lot of heartache. I think the world's been having a lot of heartache recently. It's time to end that. Oh, Kill Switch oh, Engage, shit, baby. Let's dude. do it. All right. Kill Switch Engage. I want to do Kill Switch. Brilliant. Yep. Brilliant. I'm really excited. Yeah. Uh, really cool choice. Uh, a few errors there to sink my teeth into, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and some that I feel like you'll be less familiar with. Definitely, definitely. So I thought it'd be a good one to, to go with. Yeah, I, think. I remember uh, picking up Alive or Just Breathing um, in whoo, before I had even gotten into Trivium um, and going, what fresh hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> so this will be exciting. Excellent. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all for watching Brilliant. and Thanks, for contributing guys. to the conversation. We really appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple of weeks for the Kill Switch episode. Uh, in the meantime, stay tuned, one and all. We'll thank you, you so much, guys. Time. Baby. You know how we do it.